Hello guys, in this video we'll be exploring the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of Cheddar Man, which is a Mesolithic hunter-gatherer from Britain. This is what he is predicted to look like with my Nashakot. He is predicted to have brown color eyes, snub-shaped nose and red hair, very much in contrast with the National Geographic depictions of Cheddar Man. Come on guys, get real. Black skin and blue eyes, not a chance, not a chance. He's got BH1 and BH2 and BH3, but contrary to the popular belief, HERC2 is not the only gene implicated in eye color. Having this genotype does not guarantee blue eyes, and in fact, when you consider all coloring related variants, he definitely does not have blue eyes, but instead has hazel or brown eyes. He's predicted to have red hair due to various genotypes in IRF4 and MC1R region. Um, the conclusion we can draw here is he most likely looked similar to modern-day English people in England. He is heterozygous for the pro pro variation of DRD2, which means intermediate number of D2 dopamine receptors, and he's got A2A2 genotype in TAC1, which means normal risk of ADHD, normal risk of Parkinson's. It's a very typical genotype for all the humans. Uh, gorillas, chimps, orangutans tend to score A1A1 here, that's the difference between us and them. And he's got warrior with the IE genotype in COMT, uh, which means met met, which means uh, slower reuptake of dopamine, more dopamine building up in the system, and uh, therefore advantage in memory and attention tasks, and it's a very typically, stereotypically European genotype. He did not have the sociopath gene, no derived OXTR, so as we can see, optimistic and empathetic, handles uh, stress well. Um, he does not have derived EDAR, so no East Asian facial traits, no shovel-shaped incisors, no epicanthic folds. Uh, there's other implications too, like straight hair. Uh, does not have the European lactose persistence mutation, so uh, lactose intolerant, I guess, and does have the mutation that protects against myopia, which is pretty cool. I would not need glasses to see in the distance. Now moving on to his polygenic traits, he's got a super high risk score for type 2 diabetes, he's got a below average risk score for Crohn's disease, uh, he's got a very very high risk score for bipolar disorder, he probably had it, and he's got a very high risk score for schizophrenia too, most people score in the red circle, he's got a super high risk score for brain aneurysm as well, he's got an average risk score for Parkinson's disease, he's got an average risk score for coronary heart disease, um, he's got an average risk score for type 1 diabetes, and he's got a high risk score for asthma. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Now, I noticed that Eurogenes calculators tend to be more sensitive to modern European drift, and because they are more sensitive, these results are kind of different from what you'd see with other calculators, because with other calculators, he's going to score South Asian, he's going to score Sub-Saharan African, because it's an ancient individual, but not with Eurogenes. With Eurogenes calculators, they pretty much see him for what he is, which is 100% pure European. Pun DNA kit and he calculates results here. You can see he's scoring East Asian. Uh, he's scoring some Sub-Saharan, South Indian, Oceanian, uh, all kinds of these kind of components that he's scoring because it's an ancient individual, because he's got unresolved genetic drift that's in common with Oceanian, Sub-Saharans, and various other people who are not in Europe. You see, what people don't understand is when you're dealing with ancient samples, they don't have modern European genetic drift. And modern European genetic drift is what all of these calculators look for. So an ancient sample from Europe might be more similar to ancient samples from Middle East and Africa. And in some cases, uh, for example, in the case of Neanderthals, more similar to modern Sub-Saharan Africans than to modern Europeans. That's just how it is. So you need to have modern European drift in order to score all these European components. So that's why this uh, sample is just kind of scoring all kinds of things with these calculators here. This is what he scores with Eurogenes EU test uh, K15. He is scoring mostly North Sea and Baltic rather than Atlantic and Eastern Euro. In fact, he's scoring very little Eastern Euro. Uh, partly this is because Eastern Euro has got some East Eurasian admixture and also partly because these are more recent, more modern components representing modern genetic drift. For example, the Eastern Euro component is meant to represent genetic drift that's unique to Slavic people and Russians, whereas Atlantic component is meant to represent genetic drift that's unique to French people and Basques. But this is what he scores with Eurogenes K7. He is scoring pretty much everything besides ENF. Now, um, the East Eurasian admixture, we can attribute that to uh, some affinities that exist between European hunter-gatherers and the East Asians. And the Sub-Saharan in this result is, of course, due to the unresolved genetic drift, because it's an ancient individual. He does not have a lot of the modern European genetic drift, which is basically just derived genotypes. If you got less derived genotypes, 
as is the case for most of these ancient individuals, you're going to score more Sub-Saharan African and less European, less East Asian. In regards to the East Asian ancestry or East Asian affinities that these uh, European hunter-gatherers have, here's a model that I've made with my Gorilla Mix tool. I tried to fit it all on one page. I don't know if I did a good job here, but basically modeling North Atlantic category as a mixture of Arabian plus Basque plus North African plus Amerindian plus East Asian. And with the model, we can see the result. You can actually model North Atlantic as a mixture of Basque plus uh, various Mediterraneans plus East Asians. So relative to the Mediterraneans, these Northern European people uh, Northern European categories, such as North Atlantic, which are meant to represent Northern European people, have affinities towards East Asians. Uh, actually, my bad here. I just noticed this while editing the video. It's not actually North Atlantic, it's North Sea, but, you know, same thing. Point still stands. Thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And um, you can download this sample in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description.